May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please be seated. is the day we celebrate the Magnificat, the powerful unseated, the proud scattered, the little people lifted up, the hungry fed, the rich sent away empty. This is Magnificat. This is Mary's song. This is good news. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to each and every one of you, whether you have gathered here at the old parish or watching online or have a recorded service later on. It's good to have you join with me to worship God wherever you have gathered. And I do hope and pray that you know that you will always be welcome here in this community, for this is a place of grace, not perfection, and everyone is welcome. As we continue our journey through this season of Advent, let us turn our attention to Mary, the mother of the Christ child. Mary, who responded to God's calling, 
Mary who brought the Christ child into this world and watched how the world reacted. So let us for this morning remember Mary as we still our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Holy God before us, beside us, within us, there is no place without you. Help us to recognize your presence in the dark places, the difficult places of our lives, even as we sing of your glory in the light. Amen. So let us sing our opening hymn, hymn number 472, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, and the words will be up on the screen. Let us speak with God in prayer. Let us pray. Ever loving God in this building and in our homes, we gather in praise, hope and thanks. The beloved children of you are eternal giving parents. We come seeking the wisdom to know your desire for us and to live as you have instructed. We come asking for help and advice as we try to live our lives in service of you and each other. We give thanks today and every day for all that we have and all that we are because you have helped us and so we seek to help the world around us to stand up to fear and hate and reject the evils of bigotry so in a world of confusion and division, where the right thing is not always the easy thing, we bring before you our confession of those things we have done and failed to do. So hear us in this moment of silence as we seek your forgiveness. Forgiving God, may we remain sure in your constant loving forgiveness. As a community of Christians, we give thanks for your eternal support for us as we try to be faithful in our attempts to build up your church, to be a community of pilgrims, journeying together on the road towards the light of your glorious kingdom. So help us whoever we are, to bear witness to your call to be in the world while always seeking to bring your justice and wisdom to it. So Lord, hear our prayers as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're at our third week in Advent, not long until the Christ child is born. And I wonder if Betty Fraser, will you come out? Lucy, do you want to come out with Gran and show her what to do when we ask them to light the, our Advent candle this morning? Good to have you, Lucy, in with us today as well. And Thea, good to have you. Have you come and light our third candle? There we are. Should, hopefully. So glad we've got uh, Lucy here. That bit there. There we are. That's all right. Let me see. It's like building IKEA furniture, isn't it? Watch. Let me see. Right, hold on a wee second. There you are. See, it's a power power of God. There we go. Well done. Well done. Lucy, we're thankful that you're here this morning. That's it. Well done. Thank you very much, Betty. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Well done. No, no, it won't go out. No, there, it's getting brighter. Brighter, brighter. So let's sing our, our Advent hymn, um, which is hymn number 284, Hope is a Candle. And this week we're going to sing the first three verses and we'll remain seated. we sing our next song, I want to just wish Thea a very happy birthday today. How old are you today? Seven. Oh, fantastic. And have you had a nice birthday so far? Yeah, yeah. And are you going to have cake later? Probably. Of course. You always need cake for your birthday. But you have a lovely day um, and we wish you a very happy birthday. All right. Okay, a happy seven-year-old. I can't even remember when I was seven. Yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Be back in Bethlehem, as my son keeps telling me. But anyway, let's sing our next hymn. Hymn number 285, The Angel Gabriel.
sorry, just a minute. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke 1, starting at verse 39 to verse 56. Soon afterwards, Mary got ready and hurried off to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby moved within her. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and said in a loud voice, You are the most blessed of all women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me when my Lord's mother comes to visit me? For as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby within me jumped with gladness. How happy are we to believe that the Lord's message to you will come true. Mary said, My heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because of God my Saviour, for he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me happy because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is Holy. From one generation to another, he shows mercy to those who honor him. He has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham, to all his descendants forever. Mary stayed about three months with Elizabeth and then went back home. Amen. Thank you, Liz. I'd now like to invite the choir to sing their anthem.
Thank you, choir. We're now going to sing our next hymn, hymn number 287, No Wind at the Window. And again, the words are on the screen, and if you're able, we'll stand to sing. together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I wonder how many of you sing while you work. Sing while you're in the shower or working away in the kitchen as you prepare the family meals. I wonder if you have a particular song that triggers a memory, a song that makes you cringe or laugh out loud, a song that makes you cry or join in. But I recognise that singing is not everyone's forte, and I won't ask any of you to come up and do a solo, so be rest assured. However, you cannot avoid singing, whether at the top of your voice or barely a whisper. And the Christmas story is full of songs, especially if you look at Luke's Gospel. We heard about Mary's song that Liz read for us today, also known as the Magnificat. Mary sings when she is greeted by her cousin Elizabeth. We read later on that Zachariah sings when his son John is born and his tongue is finally loosened. We hear the angels sing of peace and goodwill when they share the good news of great joy with the shepherds. And then Simeon sings his song of farewell once he has seen God's promises to Israel kept in the Christ child. So why does Luke focus our attention on these songs? What is the significance of these songs? And my understanding would be that these songs in its context is in some small way an act of resistance to those living in times of oppression. That's not to say that all singing is an act of oppression. Sometimes it's an act of joy, sometimes it is of camaraderie, but it is also an act of resistance. The Israeli, Israelite slaves knew this, when they sang their spiritual songs, they were both praising God and protesting the masters who locked them out of worship but couldn't keep them out of the promise of deliverance 
of the Bible. And then if we jump forward and move to the 1950s, 60s, with the formation of the civil rights movement, those who were protesting sang songs like We Shall Overcome, when so many in society didn't give them a chance to advance their case of justice, let alone triumph. Singing, rather than violence, strengthened the protesters. And let's be honest, those who are called out to crush protests have no contingency plan when those who have gathered raise their voices in song. Oppressors try all they like to crush rebellions, but you cannot crush people's voices in singing. And so you can understand when in times of oppression, of justice seeking, sometimes all we can do is express our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions through song. And let's be honest, we can see that in the actions of Mary and Elizabeth, who in many ways knew this as well, they must have thought about just how ridiculous their situation was. Two women, one too old to bear a child, and one so young she was not yet married, yet called to be a children of promise through whom God would have changed the world. They must have thought that the world would have paid little attention on their situation, especially being tucked away in the hill country of Judea, far from the courts of power and influence. They knew how hard life was under Roman oppression. Yet when faced with the long odds of their situation, they did not retreat or apologize or despair, but they sang. They sang of their confidence in the Lord's promise to upend the powers that be, reverse the fortunes of an unjust world, and lift up all those who have been oppressed. I guess when your back is to the wall and everything looks grim, one of the most unexpected and powerful things we can do is sing. And the journey through Advent and then Christmas season is filled with many songs. As the prolific contemporary hymn writer Gracia Grindel begins in one of her Advent hymns, a line that captures this sentiment well, she writes, We light the Advent candles against the winter light. Not because of or during, but against. Reminding all of us that the light of Advent The light of Christ is a a protest to and resistance of the darkness that gather around us. And given how much darkness seems to have grown in our recent weeks, with the uncertainty of further restrictions, because of this new variant, Omicron, which may or may not affect the church, and again, we will post on a daily basis, we will keep you posted, With the uncertainty of church closures, ministers losing their parishes, their homes, their congregations, maybe all that is left for each of us is to pray and to sing. To sing God's praises no matter the situation we're facing. To sing those emotions that we may experience during this Advent season. Maybe all we can do is raise our voices in song to be heard, to protest, to challenge all that is wrong within our society. Maybe by singing, all that we can do is sing for God's glory, no matter the situation we're facing. Perhaps when we sing the hymns of both of Advent and Christmas, we take a fresh look at the words and what it means to each one of us to journey with Mary, with Joseph, with Elizabeth, with Zachariah, with Simeon and Anna, through these hymns that combine the realism of our world with the promise of Christ. Through this season of darkness, of upcoming change and uncertain future, and a challenge to all that we believe, let's take hope from those who have sang in the face of uncertainty, persecution, destruction. Let us take reassurance from Mary and Elizabeth who remind us that there is another way, 
the way of hope. Hope that requires all of us to look beyond ourselves for rescue and relief so that we might hear again and anew God's promise to hold on to us through all that might come and bring us victorious to the other side. Whatever emotions you are feeling this Advent season, and there are many emotions that we experience, let's take comfort and hope as we give thanks that we can raise our voices in song and proclamation, announcing that Jesus Christ is indeed the light of the world, the light that shines on in the darkness, the light the darkness has never understood nor overcome. Surely, surely that is the song that we should be singing, that is worth singing during this Advent season. Let's sing our hearts to God's glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forevermore. Amen. We are going to sing again. We're going to sing, Holy Child who chose the heart of men, and we'll remain seated for this one.
verse 3. For the gift of the present, for a joy that cannot be silenced, for love that breathes life into justice and peace, we give you thanks. For the safe, sacred space of community, for being surrounded by those who have known us since before our first breath, those who welcomed us again and again into their home of their heart, we give you thanks for the conceiving power of imagination, for the birth of ideas and dreams, for their nurture into being, and for the hands and voices and energy that help them grow up. We thank you. Where there is love, there is always Advent. And we give you thanks, loving God, for every joy-filled birth. For where there is love, there is always Advent. But we cannot wait passively for your coming. You claimed us as your body, so move us to each other. And may we embody your love that breathes life into justice and peace. Create in each one of us safe, sacred spaces where all are welcome and affirmed. Fire our imagination. Give us the grace to walk and work with others who have a dream. You have known us since before our first breath. Welcome us again and again into the home of your heart. And let us be that to one another so that you will be born again and again. May a love for each other herald a new day. And let us remember that where there is love, there is always Advent. Amen. Before we bring our service to a close, I have a few intimations. I would like to make, there is tea and coffee. Uh, being served after the service if you make your way through to the large hall and again everyone's welcome tonight we are having a carols and lesson service which will be attended by the provincial grand lodge and their families the service will begin at 6.30 this evening and everyone is welcome to come and join me at that service next Sunday uh, you're in for a treat it will be our gift service and our nativity so come along and support our young people. And if you wish, please feel free to wear your Christmas jumpers and your Santa hats and have that festive spirit about you. They're working so hard on this nativity. And it's the first time, really, that you've seen them all. I think today, Joe, how many did we have, roughly, Mima? About 19 young people, so that's super. So come along and support our young folk next week. Um, also, I have to bring your attention to the updates that we received from 1 to 1 yesterday afternoon. Um, at the moment, as you know, there's many changes coming along because of this new Omicron virus. But at the moment, all we are being encouraged to do is to continue with track and trace, to keep a physical distance and to wear face coverings. Um, the Scottish Government have recommended that we all take lateral flow tests, I think, on a daily basis and self-isolate if we need to but things haven't changed as much yet, but we will be expecting more changes, and once we know, we'll let you know. Um, can I just say, though, if you're feeling unwell, please, regardless of what, if it's a cold or something, please stay at home, okay? We, we do miss you, and we're glad that you'll be able to join us, but if you're feeling unwell, you can watch the, the service online later on, so stay in the comfort of your own home, um, because Christmas is coming up, and we know people are anxious. But so just be aware of that. If, if you're feeling like a bit anxious, just make space for yourself as well. Um, but as I said, anything, if there's any changes, we'll let you know as soon as possible. And um, can I also remind folks that there is a board and session meeting on Tuesday at half past seven, um, and further details will be sent round to board members and session members. And that's all the intimations I think I have for everyone. Um, and if you do have gifts for the gift service next week,
please bring them along and give them to Grace or Liz. Um, and finally, we're go as we bring our service to a close, can I thank you once again for joining me with me for worship today. Um, and we're going to bring our service to a close by singing a closing hymn, Tell Out My Soul. So now go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love, now and forevermore. Amen.